Good morning. Is it true that choices lead to consequences and consequences lead to choices? Our reading in Jeremiah today takes us to chapter 19, verses 4 through 9. Here we go. Because they have forsaken me and made this an alien place, because they have burned incense in it to other gods whom neither they, their fathers, nor the kings of Judah have known, and have filled this place with the blood of the innocents, they have also built the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings to Baal, which I did not command or speak, nor did it come into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. And I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this place, and I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies and by the hands of those who seek their lives. Their corpses I will give as meat for the birds of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth. I will make this city desolate and a hissing. Everyone who passes by will be astonished and hiss because of all its plagues. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters. And everyone shall eat the flesh of his friend in the siege and in the desperation with which their enemies and those who seek their lives shall drive them to despair." The bulk of the population is guilty of worshiping foreign deities, false gods, idolatry, some of them even burning their children, their infant children, as sacrifices to Baal. Uh, now comes this pronouncement, a terrible pronouncement, of doom. God encourages free choice, but, but there are things that destroy spiritual potential. God sees fit to intervene in some cases. There are always civilizing and decivilizing forces at work at various times. When apostasy crosses a certain line, God may intervene. He may reshuffle the deck. He may uh, do something to reduce or take away the influence of a set of leaders that are leading things totally into corruption. He may do that. He is God. And what do we see here? He's decreed an overturning of the corrupting influences of these spiritual leaders. And it's not the first time. Now they're not going to just call this the Valley of Tophet anymore, the Valley of the Son of Hinnom. Now it's going to be called the Valley of Slaughter. Alien armies are going to come. They're going to lay siege to Jerusalem. Some of those trapped within her gates are actually going to engage in cannibalism. The city is surrounded. And there's nothing to eat. Friends will eat friends. For Judah, a time is very near now for a vast overthrow. That was then. This is now. When we look out across our horizon, what do we see today? Very rapid changes, rapid spiritual decline, a sharp decivilization of our world. There's a tremendous decline in actionable information. Think about it. What sources would you trust today? Trust for medical information for your health, the health of your family. What sources of information would you trust for accurate political information? What sources of information would you trust for accurate financial information, accurate information about food, accurate information about just about anything. What sources? I would bet that if you look back one year, come 12 months forward to today, you would say to yourself, if you look at this, the list is much shorter of sources you would really trust. We're right now at a kind of a, a time where there's a, a remarkable decivilization occurring. Even in the churches, do we trust all of our church publications equally? Do we trust them to give us the right information? Or do sometimes our church publications simply echo the very ideas and themes that are current. It, it always kind of comes along, and it just comes into the church through our own church publications. Why is that? Why are, not, why are we the tail and not the head? Something's way wrong. The reason why for these changes is because today, very much as in the time of Judah, we are undergoing a, a remarkable period of rapid decivilization, and that's where we are. When this took place in Judah, God engaged in a massive intervention that upended their world. I can't tell you what we'll face in the next month, a month from now, a year from now. I can't tell you that, but I can tell you one thing. We can trust in God's word. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be right. Uh, we see as we look back in history. We don't want to be doomed to learn from history the hard way. We want to learn from history the smart way. You've given us this history so that we would see these examples there for us, we upon whom the ends of the age have come. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our choices lead onward to our next choices. God be with you.